Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So I look at my mailbox today. I get um, Washington Post and a few other uh, news outlets that send directly to your mailbox when they have um, major stories, or what they would consider to be a major story. So I, I see this. This is a story I've been covering, so I'm gonna keep covering it. God damn it. Go. There you go, there you go. <laughs> All right. Immigration bill fails in Congress, leaving dreamers in limbo. Leaving dreamers in limbo. Um, I'm not a dreamer. I was born and raised on the soil. Native American, you know, background, African background. So I don't necessarily know what that thing is to be preyed on by the government that you're in. I can maybe, you know, from the standpoint of being African American or whatever, but, but this is different. This is literally being preyed upon. You've lived in this country your entire life. This is the only country you know. You are American through and through, just like the next person who's American. It's just a legal technicality. Legal technicality. And under that, you can be preyed upon with force and thrown out of the country ripping you out of whatever context that you're in in this country in the united states there are people who are even on my channel who talk about being terrified that these maniacs in in ice will prey upon them and strip them out of wherever they are they're getting paid to do it so they just do what they've been paid to do they're robots in this case that's that being said that being said robots that have the capacity to beat punch and kill you but at the very least they're dragging you away from the world that you know let's take a look at this I, let's take a look I'll, I'll hold my comments weeks of intense negotiation for a bipartisan deal on immigration collapsed in congress on thursday leaving hundreds of thousands of young undocumented immigrants facing possible deportation now it was this show this host words coming out of this mouth saying that the moment that you give up what you had, your leverage, the only leverage that you had, the moment that you gave that up, this deal is going to fall apart. You had no other leverage other, other than the things that you were doing um, with regards to the budget deals. That was your leverage. The capacity to shut down the government was your leverage. You gave those things away one after the next. Shutting down the government for three days. Was it important or not? If it wasn't that important to you, why shut the government down in the first place? And if it was that important to you, why open it when all of these things, in one instance after the next? DACA was the thing that get thrown overboard. So you open the government after three days. A couple of days pass, and then we find out DACA is off the table in negotiations. You shut down the government for this item. And Republicans say, we're not giving you dick. And you said, okay. And you open it back up anyway, not getting this item, but getting Mitch McConnell's sole promise to bring it up. Now, it was this show also that said, well, wait a minute. What does that mean? He has no approval from Paul Ryan. He has no approval from Donald Trump. And that the best that you can get in this situation is Mitch McConnell calling it to attention. Does Mitch McConnell have the votes to make this work? I asked all of these questions because this seemed manic to me that you were shut the government down. Something mattered to you that much. Why? Shut this sh Bring this shit to a stop. I, I, the analogy of Spider-Man with his webs, you know, holding on to the train is like Toby Maguire bringing this shit to a halt, to a, to a halt. It's a little bit weird, and it seems magnificently theatrical to go through these motions in this way because one step after the next, it got across your true intent. DACA was not your main focus. DACA was not the thing that you cared about. This was political theater to make it look as if DACA mattered. You shut the government down for three days and then you found out a few days later DACA was even off the table in negotiations. The House tries to hold the line. Nancy Pelosi stands up and, and pumps apparently for 19 hours or some ridiculous amount of time. And they're screaming I'm like, oh wow, she stood up all the time and pumps. She didn't have to wear pumps. She could wear tennis shoes. She could wear any, any kind of shoe she wanted to. I mean, come on. Certainly, that's not the story here. The story here 
is that a million kids, so roughly a million kids, are going to start being preyed upon in the coming month. And Democrats, who are supposed to have been the resistance, we're holding back tonight. We're standing for this identity and that identity. We hug every darkie that we can find. We're the resistance. Only resisted a little bit. The theater was nice. I applauded at the time. But it was theater after all. And right now, you gave up all of the leverage that you had in each situation. And now, news come out. The deal that you came up with fell apart. Are these kids going to get deported? And do you understand that not having the capacity to say no, not have the capacity to say this is the one thing that we want. We'll give you your stupid wall, but this is the one thing that we want. Not having the capacity, whether you want to talk about shutting the government down, whether you want to talk about, yeah, shutting the government down, not agreeing to the budget deal. That was your leverage. That was your stone. That was your brick. That was your bat. That was the one thing that you had at your disposal. We are saying no until this is done. Do you realize that at the very least it would have made you look like you had some kind of core? It made you look like you had a core. Right now it looked like you guys failed and, and caved on multiple occasions, even with 80% of the public backing you. Even with 80% of the public backing you. I, I, I'm not going to overly bitch on this. I'll put the story at the bottom. I'm, I, I guess I'm trying to make this point that Democrats believe that they can take the House and the Senate. They're not going to do anything to fuck up that thing of taking the House and the Senate. Fighting and being, representing the DACA recipients, even with the public backing them, is too risky. They don't know the outcoming results of doing that. It's un somewhat unpredictable. Would the public blame them? Would the public blame Republicans? Who would, the Republic, who would the public blame? Now, Republicans own the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court, and the presidency. It is not the responsibility of Democrats to keep the government open. If Republicans can't make a deal, if Republicans can't figure that shit out, that is on them. Now, being able to make that argument stick is the most important thing if you're going to say, look, this is what we wanted in the budget deal. We don't want those kids to be kicked out the country and make that argument stick. But no, but no, Republicans will call you bad names. And it is more important that these kids, you know, it's more important. How can I say this? It's almost being tepid, being neutral, being milk toast, being something that you can't necessarily put a hand on. Is being somewhere where you don't necessarily plant your feet anywhere. That's more important than actually representing the interests of these kids. You had the potential to actually represent these kids and you gave it away. One step after the next, you gave it away. And in this case, you've lost all leverage and now all of these deals are falling apart. You understand that they have no incentive. They are Republicans. They do not give two shits about immigration. They don't care about DACA. They don't care if these kids get kicked out of the country. They don't care if maniacs working for the federal government goes and prays and raids kids' households in order to drag those kids into a country that they've never been. They don't care. Their base don't care. You understand that the only leverage that you had in this process was that budget. That was it. And you gave it away. If you really cared, you would behave differently. That's my point. They did, they give two shits about you. They use you for the sake of your identity. That's it. When chips are down, when it comes to brass tacks, this is what they do. They cave over and over repeatedly. It doesn't take a massive amount of political wisdom to look at the situation and say you lose your leverage the moment that you sign that budget deal. You lose all of your leverage. What do you have as leverage? Trump may not want to see those kids go, but Trump's base is perfectly okay with seeing those kids go, meaning the political incentive is Trump to not give two shits about those kids being kicked out the country. So I, I, I don't know if Trump is honest about not wanting to see those kids kicked out to the country, but at the end of the day, they understood that the moment that budget deal was signed, their leverage went to zero. Now, either it's pure incompetence, meaning they don't know that. They don't know that. They don't know that politics is leverage. They don't know that they lose the leverage once they sign that budget deal. Either they don't know that, 
or there were other concerns that were more important than those DACA kids. So regardless of all the times they bitch and moan and complain and everything else, at the end of the day, they sold those kids out on a whim, sold them out and gave you all of this political theater to try to make it look like they're standing up for the resistance. We're fighting Donald Trump. We're signing budget deals. We're signing budget deals that don't include the thing that we actually shut the government down for. You guys are sorry and pathetic. You guys are pathetic. Don't tell me about this thing of resistance. Don't tell me about the thing of resistance. I don't want to hear about the schoolyard resistance where these guys just say it. These guys wear pussy hats and everything else. Resistance is being willing to go down on the line and say, yes, we're not passing squat. We're not putting our names to anything until this is included into the process. And meaning it. And meaning it. The Republicans know you're so milk toast. They don't even they didn't even believe that you would hold the that particular that particular position, meaning shutting the government down. Do you know how sad that is? That they said these guys are so weak. They're so weak. That even if they shut it down, they're not going to keep it shut. They're weak. And they were right. They were right. I would say Hispanics who vote for these guys. And who have people who are going to be adversely affected. By the things that take place. Meaning they're failures. I understand that Republicans are maniacs. I understand that it, it is a terrifying thing to be in some of these states where your skin color gives enough pretext for them to ask you where are you from and where are your papers. So I, I don't take that lightly. I'm making the point that at some point you need to have somebody who represents your interests and they're not it. They're not it. But for all their for all of the things that they will say and all of the words that they say and everything else, at the end of the day, you are used for political ends. It is imperative to understand that and it's imperative to know that. And it is it's it's it behooves you to get that point. African Americans, same boat. Labor, same boat. Same boat. At some point, you have to get to the point of saying, I am gonna vote for somebody who represents my interests. And if these guys don't, then they're not getting my vote. If that means I'm voting for a third party, then I'm voting for a third party. And understand that that may mean that you lose, but you already have the worst case scenario right now in office. At which point do you want change? Were you actually happy with the results of the last Democratic president or the president before that? At which point do you want something to change? And understand that that change is not going to come about doing the exact same thing that you've always done. Leave it at that. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, write, subscribe, and of course, you can always support the picture.